In section 2.3, we're going to look at additional displays of quantitative data. Now remember, we've already found a whole bunch of different things like the frequency distribution, the relative frequency distribution, the cumulative frequency distribution uh, way back here. Then we've also found histograms right there and relative frequency histograms. And then we looked at stem and leaf plots and dot plots. So we've looked at quite a bit already, but we're going to expand our horizons just a little bit. And before we do that, we have to find something first. We have to find something called the midpoint, the class midpoint. Now, the class midpoint is in the middle of your class. So you can find it by adding consecutive lower class limits and dividing by two. That's what it says right here. Now, the first class isn't any use to us down here because it's open-ended. So let's look at this class right here. So remember that this high number over here is really 49.9999999 forever right? So you can't type that into a calculator or anything. So what you're going to do is you're going to take consecutive lower class limits. You're going to take 40 and 50 and you're going to add them up and you're going to divide by two. So 40 oops, plus 50 divided by two, which is 90 over two, which is 45. Okay. All right, so then the next one would be 50 and 60. You add those two up and divide by two. So 50 plus 60, which would make 110, which would make 55. Now, there's a pattern kind of going on here because this is a frequency distribution that's set up evenly, which in our course, almost all frequency distributions will be, which is that there's a distance here, 40 to 50, that's 10. 50 to 60, that's 10. 60 to 70, hey, that's 10 again, and so on. And what's more, you can even do it with 39. 39 to 49, 49 to 59, 59 to 69, and so on. That's a distance of 10. That's called the class width. We already ran into that in the previous section. Now, you can use that to kind of help yourself. I mean, if you don't want to sit here and do the formula, because you could do the formula, 60 plus 70 divided by 2, 70 plus 80 divided by 2. You could do that, but you're going to run into this pattern of they're 10 apart. 45 plus 10 makes 55. 55 plus 10 makes 65. 65 plus 10 is 75, and then 85, and then 95. Now, notice the last one. With open-ended classes, you use the class width to determine the, that class midpoint as if it wasn't open-ended. So you pretend, I don't care that this is everything above 90. I'm just going to keep using that 10, 10, 10 and get my number. And by the same token, it was open-ended on the low end. So I'm going to take that 10 and subtract it off and I'm going to get 35. So that's how to find class midpoints. But always remember that what you do is you add up consecutive lower class limits. Do not add lower and upper. That is completely incorrect. Add lower plus the next lower. All right, we're done with that section. Now let's look at polygons. Frequency polygons are line graphs of a frequency distribution. It uses the class midpoints on the x-axis. And then we should always start these graphs with a fake class, basically, that starts at zero. And we should actually end with a fake class. Start and end. There it is. Start and end with a fake class of zero, okay? And a relative frequency polygon is the same thing. It just uses relative frequency instead of frequency. So let's look here. This is the final exam grades that you were just looking at right here. So 35 was the midpoint for the first class and there were two there. 45 for the next class and there were five there. If you look here, you can see there's 35 and look at that, that's not frequency, that's relative frequency, right? So this is a relative frequency graph. There's 35, there's 45, there's 55, and so on. 85 had the highest relative frequency, probably because it had the highest frequency right here. Yep, it did, okay? All right, so what type of graph is this? Well, this is a relative frequency polygon. So let me type that up one second. There we go. So I changed the question a little bit to explain what type of graph this is. This is a relative frequency polygon. That's because it's a line graph um, with relative frequency on the y-axis and the midpoints on the x-axis. That's the definition of a relative frequency polygon. But it has some fake classes here. It starts at zero and it ends at zero. 
which is a little bit different than regular line graphs. So over here at the beginning, that midpoint is 25. So just keeping the logic of this table going, if you had 25 as another class, there must have been a 30 to 39 here and then a 20 to 29 before it. So you'd have to kind of logic your way through that. If 35 is the midpoint and 45 is the next midpoint, then 40 is the cutoff here. If 25 and 35 are the midpoints, then 30 is the cutoff here, which means 29.9 is the high end of the class, and that means 20 is the low end. So you kind of have to kind of work your way around the logic here. Same deal on the other side. If this is 105 and that's 95, then 100 must have been the start of that class. And that means 109.9 .9 is the end of that class in order to keep that 10 width that we've got going on. So notice every single one of these tick marks is 10 apart because that's your class width. All right, so that's a frequency polygon and a relative frequency polygon. Now what about an ogive? Yeah, I know it looks like ogive, but it's ogive. So a, a frequency ogive is a line graph of a cumulative frequency distribution that uses upper class limits on the x-axis. And the graph should also have a fake class, but only at the beginning. It has a fake first class, which always has a value of zero. And a relative frequency ogive is the same thing, but it uses relative frequency, cumulative relative frequency for the y-axis values. So, and again, I'm going to change this explain what type of graph this is. And then what is the fake class? Because there's only one fake class here at the very beginning. All right, so let me type that up one second. There we go. It's a frequency ogive. And it's a little bit harder to see because frequency, it's not going to say percent or something like that. But you can tell it's frequency because it's talking about number of students. But you can tell it's cumulative because the graph is constantly going up. It's always rising. It's always increasing. Let me put it that way. Um, so the graph is always going up because... I shouldn't say it, that's terrible, is because frequency is cumulative. So it's it's like you're climbing the mountain, right? Um, if you ever watched uh, The Price is Right as a kid, it reminds me of the yodeler, you know, climbing up the mountain. Now the fake class at the start is the same fake class we ran into before, but you'd have to spot it a different way. This is the upper class limit of 29. So that means the next class starts at 30. So again, that distance of 10, 29 to 39 is 10. 39 to 49 is 10. So if that class starts at 30, then the one before it must start at 20. Okay. So you're kind of using logic and the class width to kind of figure that out. All right. Oops, I've lost my... There we go. All right, so considering the following graph of the chlamydia rates for women in the U.S. at different ages. Okay, so here we have chlamydia rates for women in the U.S. by age. So here are their ages down here, and here's their rate up here. Okay, so what type of graph is this? Well, it's close. It's, it's basically a frequency polygon, but it's a little bit odd. Uh, let's see here. Frequent, oops, frequency polygon, but didn't not have fake classes. Okay, so it doesn't start at zero like it should. There should be one more class here at the beginning. There should be another class here at the end. To be honest, a lot of times those fake classes get, get dropped out in real life. So statisticians like having them, but a lot of times they just don't, don't get drawn because they don't make sense. You don't want to talk about, you know, in this case it would be seven and a half year olds who have chlamydia, which just seems strange. So um, that, that doesn't quite work. But for all intents and purposes, it's a frequency polygon. Now, frequency, we could argue a little bit because this is technically a rate. So this is the rate per 100,000. So you'd actually divide each of these numbers by 100,000. But since they didn't and they're keeping them numbers that are, that are larger like this, they're not treating them like their percents, for example. So percent is the relative frequency one. Um, then we're going to treat it as if it's a, a frequency polygon. But again, it's a little bit gray for our purposes, but we're going to go with frequency polygon. All right, now the numbers on the horizontal axis are the midpoints, right? Because if it's a polygon, those are going to be midpoints. The class width, you can tell, is 5. And you can see that because you can divide here, or subtract, excuse me, 17.5 take away 12.5 is 5. And it's consistent all the way along the graph. I mean, a true frequency polygon will be everything will be the same width. So if you have 
that's 12, 17, that's 5. 17 to 22, that's 5. 22 to 27, that's 5, and so on. All right, now let's compute the class limits of the second class. All right, so this is where the rubber meets the road here. So the midpoint is 17.5, right? And don't forget that the width is equal to 5. So we're going to use those facts to kind of help ourselves a little bit here. All right, so what's halfway between 12 and a half and 17 and a half? That's what we need to know. Because if we know what's halfway between the two of them, then we'll have where that class starts, right? So the starting start or lower class limit is equal to 12.5 plus 17.5 add them up and divide by 2, which is 30 divided by 2, which is 15, right? So remember if 17 right here in the middle is the midpoint, then this number over here in between 12.5 and 17.5 must be the start, right? And that's 15. Then the upper class limit is 5 away from that, but 0.99999. So the next lower class limit, let me put it this way. Next lower class limit is equal to 15 plus 5, which is 20. So that means the upper class limit is 19.99999. So there you have it. There we go. I got it all to fit. So again, the lower class limit was 15, you find that by taking the average of these two, 12.5 plus 17.5, that's 15. Then the next one must be at 20, right? So Because you add the class width of 5. But if it's 20, that means the upper class limit is 19.999999. And then you round to however many decimal places you want. Like in this case, we have data that goes to one decimal place, so I'd probably stop it at 19.9. All right, now which age range of women is most likely to contract chlamydia? So... That would be right here. The midpoint is 22.5 right there. So I would take the same argument we just did. I would say the midpoint was 22.5. Sorry about that. I messed that up. And the width is 5. So the lower class limit is 22 plus 27 divided by 2. That's 50 divided by 2, which is 25. Then use the lower the width to find the next lower class limit, which would be 30. So that means the upper class limit is 29.999999 forever, and then just round to however many you want. And realize that when you're talking about the most likely, what you're talking about is what we've run into before, something called the modal class. That is the one that has the highest frequency. Oops, I can't get this to do what I want. There we go. All right, I'll stop here and I'll see you back here for the second video to talk, cover the last two pages.